Hello, hello, welcome to the Trading Sources Show, guys. Well, um, what I'll be doing today, I'll be talking about who wants to be a millionaire. Yes, you heard that right. Who wants to be a millionaire? And with that being said, welcome to the Financial Literacy Month, guys. Um, it's the month of April, okay? And it is the month of financial literacy. That is the whole reason why I'm coming up with this topic. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, with that being said, um, today we'll be talking about personal finance as well. Now, what is personal finance? Uh, according to the simple dollar, personal financing should be a number one go for every individual regardless of race religion sex and age okay um i believe that this method of uh knowing where your finance and where, where your money is going it does help you to build um emergency fund paying off debt retirement savings and uh whatever you can think about um, some people may also argue that why, um, why not live life now and worry about the future later, okay? But Investopedia has it that your future happiness depends on three fundamental principles, which is your prioritization, assessment, and restraint, okay? So, with that being said, it is very important that uh, being a young investor isn't an easy easy one but uh, uh people can tell you you know uh, save money save this save that but sometimes you get too overwhelmed okay you have to invest your money in an assets rather than a liability you have to invest your money in something that is going to grow rather than not to grow okay i wish i were constantly being told uh, uh, uh to watch what i spend my money on many many years ago it's been i'll say for me it's never too late to start investing now okay and your investment can come from savings in your national banks or savings in banks that offers better than the national average um, with this fund in your individual account you can assess your funds meaning you can easily withdraw your funds at any time during the cycle investing in mutual funds okay um, the national banks like bank of america chase bank west fargo all pay interest of 0.01 percent okay so um on pretty much on your money okay the, that you saved on the in, in in their bank okay but but someone like capital one and backlist they can offer close to 0.1 percent to you know half a percent or uh 0.9 percent interest on your savings now let's do some really interesting and uh uh, 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 uh interesting math on your uh savings so now let's go to uh, interest calculator, right? So in interest calculator, let's assume that we have, say, $5,000 that we want to save. Not really this amount. We can say $1,000, okay? And we're not planning on contributing anything during this annual period, okay? But we can contribute something on our savings, say we contribute $100, every single month on this savings okay uh it's gonna be contributed at the beginning of the uh, compounding period let's say the interest rate which is our national average okay your chase bank and your capital uh, your chase bank and your bank of america go check it out check how much they pay you on interest is 0.01 percent which is nothing okay it is literally nothing compared to other banks like Backlist and Capital One. However, um, the national banks charge you a crazy amount of interest from 15% to 29.99% while your money, you know, is in their custody. They use your money for day-to-day day -day bank transactions. But then you get 
paid 0.01%. Okay. For example, you're using their credit card to pay for purchases and stuff, and you, you get charged 15%, like I said earlier, to 29.99%. But they are using your money and they are paying you 0.01%, which for me, it doesn't make sense, right? So, um, it is very interesting and very important that you learn how to invest in the mutual funds. It will help you to grow in the long run. Now, let's take, for example, we have a starting principal of $1,000 and we're paying monthly $100 and the interest is that, okay? Now, after 40 years, let's say after 40 years and with the tax rate, let's assume we're not doing a tax rate right now, but I'll uh, say inflation of 3%. Now let's calculate it. Okay, we're going to need annual contribution. Okay, say zero, put zero there. Now, that annual percentage is going to give you a total interest of $100. Isn't that crazy? With all your contribution, you contributed almost $49,000 for the whole 40 years. And they are paying you $100 of interest. That is bank like Chase Bank and Bank of America West Fargo. Isn't this crazy? It, for me, it is stupid. Okay. Now, look at, look at the annual schedule calculations. Okay. That is how it looks. It's pathetic. Okay. Now, let's say, okay, we decide we don't want to use Bank of America or Chase Bank or even West Fargo. Let's go to Backless Bank or go to Capital One. Capital One offers 0.1%. Now let's calculate that. It is even better because we're getting a thousand dollars after 40 years. Now let's go to uh backless bank zero point that. So now we're getting even better, right? So we have five thousand three hundred and fifty-four dollars after 40 years. That is gonna be your interest. So when you add everything up, your outstanding balance is gonna be fifty-four thousand three hundred and fifty-four dollars after 40 years. Wow. Now, knowing what mutual fund is, now I will say, what is mutual fund? Let's go to Investopedia real quick, okay? Now, a mutual fund is a type of financial vehicle made up of a pool of money collected from many investors to invest in securities like stocks, bonds, money market investment, and other assets. Mutual funds are operated by professional money managers who allocate these funds assets and attempt to produce capital gains or income for the funds investors, which is going to be you. It doesn't matter. You can start investing from 18 years old. Okay. You can start investing from a being, you know, once you're 18, you can start investing. You don't have to wait until later. Also, even if you, you know, you are of a later age, you can also begin to invest $50, $100, just like that. Just form that habit of investment. Okay. Mutual fund charge annual fees called expense ratio. You want to be looking for expense ratio that is very minimal very small expense ratio because they use this for in, in some cases commissions which can affect your overall return but there is nothing nothing to to worry about the fees the the, the expense ratio that they charge but we can look i can show you how to look for you know find uh, 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 mutual funds that has low expense ratio with a high apy which is annual uh, a percentage yields, okay? Now, so let's uh, do this real quick. There are, we also have, because we talked about what? Capital gains, right? We talk about capital gains. Now, what is capital gain? Capital gains is a tax on the growth in value of investment incurred uh, when an individual or corporation sell those investments, okay? So, um capital gains treatment uh, 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 treatment only applies to capital assets such as stocks bonds jewelries coin collections and real estate property the irs taxes all capital gains but has different tax approaches 
for long-term gains versus short-term gains. So when you have your money, when you have your stocks, when you have your uh, um, investment for a longer period of time, you won't be paying short-term capital gain, but a long-term capital gain, which will help you better if you decide to go to individual account. You can always open up what they call a Roth account as well. In a Roth account, you will have to hold this investment growth free of tax until you are 59 and a half before you can use the gains without penalty of paying those taxes. Now, what is ROT? A ROT is an individual retirement account that allows qualified withdrawers on tax-free basis provided setting conditions are satisfied. Okay, now, for the 2021, the contribution limit is $6,000 a year unless you are age 50 or older, which uh, case you can deposit up to $7,000 if you're 50 or older. Now, the thing is, you can't contribute to a Roth account if you make too much money. Yes, why? In 2021, the limit for singles is $140,000. So if you if you make more than $140,000 per year, you won't be able to contribute more than the required uh, 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 limit. Okay, that is my own opinion. So uh, for married couples, the limit is 208. However. This is not a recommendation to buy or sell any investment. It's for entertainment and educational purposes only. Now, almost all brokerages firms, both physical and online, offer a Roth IRA. So do most banks and investment companies. Okay, so now. What are we going to be talking about in this video? We're going to be talking about compound interest, principal amount, personal finance, the three fundamental principles we've talked about, and FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So you can, if, if for, for whatever reason something happened to the bank, you will be paid $250,000 on your investment. Now, we're talking about mutual funds and we're talking about where you're going to invest your mutual funds. You can invest your mutual funds on uh, an individual account or you can invest on a Roth account. It's up to you how you want to invest these uh, funds because individual investment, on the other hand, you can pay taxes on your gains. Capital tax, what is a capital tax, which we've talked about earlier on okay so with that being said we made the calculations that if we put our money in a savings account that pays uh, 50 half a, half a cents you know half a percent then we're gonna be having you know five thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars of interest after 40 years but now there is something really important because like say like uh, uh what i call fidelity fidelity and other banks out there other like morgan stanley goldman sachs and what have you um west fargo uh vanguard and all that they also offer uh mutual funds so now if you're looking at this you're gonna note you you notice that for the lifetime of this portfolio, okay, for this fund itself, is offering 13.81% for the lifetime. But though you can see, right, the expense ratio is so high. You don't want to be looking for um, a fund that has high expense ratio. And when you go in, you'll be able to... Um, clear let's say we clear it now we're looking for uh mutual fund this is mutual fund research on fidelity website we're looking you can look for a fidelity funds only you can 
fund picks by fidelity like uh, say those fund managers they picked it that yes these are the best funds to invest in and also you, we have the risks too what kind of risk you want okay your designated risk what kind of asset or category okay you want to go sector equity taxable bond us equity commodities and what have you okay now the criteria we have fidelity funds only fidelity picks from fidelity uh, no transaction fee only i do like this one because i don't want any transaction fees at all and i also want a situation whereby i'm able to invest my money at any given amount i have i can invest a hundred dollars or two thousand dollars so between these we have between zero and less than 2.5k $2,500. You can also find out what the money star rating is, the high overall rating, high, the returns, maybe you want high returns, you want expense ratio to be very small. Now we have 10, 10 matching funds. Now let's view these funds, okay? We view the result. These are the 10 matching funds. You're going to see that here we have 15, uh, 16%, uh, okay? We have 13%. This is BlackRock Advantage Small Cap, okay? We have 9%, we have 16%. Now, let's take, for example, we decide, okay, let's go into uh, a Fidelity US Sustainability Index Fund that offers 16%, right? So, we can buy it. If you go into these funds, let's see what the funds offer. The fund offers a low expense ratio of 0.11% with a minimum of zero. So you can you can decide, okay, let me put $100 in this or $1,000 or $5,000, it doesn't matter. That is the expense ratio. Hypothetically speaking, let's look at the growth of $10,000 for the past year now uh what are we looking at okay since 2017 the fund has actually made what eighteen thousand dollars on their ten thousand dollars investment right so so the low is 10.79 and the high is 17.4 uh, one that is what it's been is traded at right now so if you look at the composition or the holdings of these funds we have microsoft google tesla is there i love this you have google as well you have j and j the vaccine company you have disney nvidia mastercard even visa is there so to tell you that you know you you're buying a basket of stocks that are just in one okay so your risk is limited okay for year to date so far we have eight percent for the year one year one year period we have 55.66 percent isn't that crazy but guess what your national average pay you an interest of what 0.01 percent this is fantastic even after three years, look at the three years uh, return, 17%. Look at the lifetime return, 16.7%. Who said this is not good, right? So, no matter what, the market will take correction, but it will still keep going higher and higher and higher, okay? So, um, now let's look at what this will give us, hypothetically. Okay, let's say we invest a um, thousand dollars with an annual contribution. If you like to contribute, we're using actual calculator.net. Okay, now we say that was what 16.77 percent, right? Now the annual is annually, let's say the compound is annually, and uh, after 40 years. With a tax rate, uh, we were not dealing with tax rate because we're going to leave it for a long time on our rot account, right? Um, let's assume inflation of 3%, okay? Between 25 and 3%, let's assume that. 
Now let's calculate. You're gonna see, you're gonna be a millionaire after 40 years having to have your base principle of a thousand dollars okay your base principle of a thousand dollars and then your monthly contribution of a hundred dollars on this fund for 40 years so if you contribute a hundred dollars every single month you're gonna the total principle the total contribution you're gonna have all together is going to be 50 uh, 49,000 dollars okay now the most beautiful interesting thing here is your total interest is going to be 4.19 million after 40 years making you a millionaire you don't want to go you, you, you pretty much this you don't need to go into the shore and say hey who wants to be a millionaire right because right now you're beginning to save let's assume okay say for the next 20 years because maybe you're 40 years or you're 30 years or 20 years it doesn't matter but if you begin to invest now you will have the opportunity to reap later or your children will be able to enjoy you know your hard work after these years okay now let's say for example you're being generous and you decide to contribute even more every month if you're working and say I'm contributing uh, from my paycheck $200 and I have a thousand dollars and then you're gonna have 7.9 million dollars after 40 years of interest if you add that up you become 8.0 just 8 million dollars rich of course with inflation being adjusted okay so it is very critical it is very important that you understand what a compounding interest is and how you can make decent amount of money by contributing little by little every single month okay with inflations and all we, 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 blah, blah 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 with inflation and all that let's say we are not contributing monthly and we decide okay i'm going to invest this five thousand dollars for a long period of time that offers me 16.7 percent after 40 years let's see what you're going to get uh so it's zero we need to put zero there now you're still going to be a millionaire 2.4 million dollars of interest after this long period of time so compounding interest is an interesting thing to look up to every time it is very important it still doesn't matter we are using calculator.net there will be just little variation on this let's go back we're looking at this Microsoft funds. We're looking at FITLX. Okay. After uh, uh, the lifetime of it is 16%, 16.7%. So now let's go ahead and use this calculator. Let's say $1,000. The same thing we're doing. Okay. I plan a, a future plan contribution per year. Let's say, okay, um, we have $100. And $100 we contribute monthly, that is going to give you $1,200, right? So let's say $1,200, that's what I'll be contributing every single year. And then my time frame is going to be 40 years with a rate of return, okay? A rate of return of what? We had was 16.7, right? And then that is the fund expense ratio. So now, what is the ex, uh, fund expense ratio? Let's go look at it. It's going to be right here. It's 0 0.11, 0.11%. So now, let's impute that data there, okay? This is it. Now, let's calculate this to, just to see if we're going to still be a millionaire, okay? Now, that is it. Fantastic. That is you being a $4.5 million richer okay because you're going to calculate the fund expense you're going to pay what 140 40 uh five thousand dollars 329 uh dollars for the life of your 
uh, 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 investment, which is 40 years. So you're going to be paying the cost of your fees for them to manage these your funds and give you a return of 16%. You're going to be paying $145,000, but you're going to be a millionaire. This is for these funds. It is very interesting to know that mutual funds has flexibility and some of them aren't flexible. Should you invest in a mutual fund? It says mutual funds are systematic investment plans are popular for retirement investing, but some better investments are available. Okay. Higher expense ratio. That is what I just talked about that we need small expense ratio. If you can deal with small expense, just a little fraction of expense ratio, you should be good. Funds aren't flexible. Mutual fund has to stick to its mandate. That is correct. But also, I like to look at the lifetime of the funds. Look at the lifetime. It's offering 16%. Year to date. We're actually in April and we have 8.29% already. Right? And the risk of this category is between low and high. The return is high. The return is huge. Okay. That is an impressive return. For the year so far, we have 55%. Talking about return, you know, I've been I've been dealing with this as well. So that's the reason why I made this uh, video because, you know, no one told me this long time ago. Okay. I never knew about this long time. Just, you know, I, I, I got to learn about this like what, like uh, uh, three years ago. And then I started looking for opportunity to start investing without high risk, you know, and this is my return for one of my account. Okay. This is my return. This is actually my individual account return. I'm not worried about the taxes that I, I I'm paying on this, but I am making a huge amount of money. Okay, so um, then we can go to the other one, which is my Roth account. My Roth account as well is growing. This is 173% increase. This is as a result what last uh, 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 this week, March 31st. This is the, 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 the last, this is my one year return so far. Okay, and it was updated what? Today. So uh, what, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, it's very important that we all begin, start to invest. It doesn't matter how much you are investing, just start investing. Because if you, if you go back to the calculator and say, okay, I'm not going to put anything every year. Let's say we're going to put $0. Okay. And we say, okay, um, we have a hundred dollars to invest 40 years with this return and this expense ratio. What is it going to give us? This is what we're going to get. We're going to pay a, a cost of fees of 1700, but we're going to make $48,000 after 40 years, just leaving your hundred dollars in there for 40 years. It's not a year, two years, three years It's 40 years. So, Yes, sometimes we get our tax return and stuff like that and we decide, oh, yes, let's invest. Yes, you can do that. Even if you start with $100, guess what? You can say, okay, um, let's say during the tax return every year, I get $1,000 or 2000 3000 It doesn't matter what you get on tax return and say, okay, let me put $500 every year. Let's look at what $500 we give us with this rate of return on the mutual funds. And you're going to get $1.7 million after 40 years. Man, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of talking about it. This is amazing. Okay, this is really important. You can choose to go to the, the Roth route. You can go into, you can use the Roth. Or, you know, you can use the Roth. Okay, 
arrow th which is rod i arrow a or you can do your individual okay you can do your individual account okay because um you can do individual account these are the two you want to use if you want to actually um be able to use your money before you turn 59 and a half you can go with the individual but you're gonna pay a tax penalty there's gonna be tax on it and you say okay let me use the rot this you will not pay any taxes okay until you're 59 and a half okay you 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 won't pay any taxes until after that period of time but if you withdraw before 59 and a half then you will pay taxes on your investment okay which will give you i think a long term capital gain so with that being said that is what i've been doing and the return has been really really impressive okay so now you have between the rot account or the individual investment account you can open this account with fidelity um think or swim or td ameritrade or way we webull uh you can open with west fargo chase whatever you want to open but i want you to stay away from all those other savings account like chase bank of america that offers 0.01 percent on your savings it doesn't make sense if you if you want to save your money there why don't you just put it in mutual funds you can easily take your money out as well there is nothing wrong making five thousand dollars and you pay a, a capital a, a, a gain on five thousand dollars then putting your money in you know a, a chase bank or bank of america that offer you 0.01 percent that is nothing okay so for me i rather pay taxes on a thousand dollar gain than having to leave my money in a bank that will only offer me a 0.01 percent it just doesn't make sense of course my funds are easily accessible i can withdraw it at any time pay taxes on it and use it for emergency situations medical situations paying off to them debt paying off loans just you want to be financially free this is about being a millionaire in the future with that being said check it out as well you don't need to log into fidelity to check what funds that they have available okay you just don't need to have an account with fidelity go ahead and check it out look into it and i think you you, you know uh, you blow your mind with this okay it's very important also check the expense ratio you want something with very small expense ratio and you can also okay let me say i'm looking for uh, uh, um funds picks from fidelity no fees no transaction and you're gonna get 335 and if you want to do fidelity only that is fine if you want to do other other um banks is okay you have buffalo small cap you have morgan stanley you have blackrock you have Amer american century you have artisan small cap you know different funds you have fidelity funds here you have uh, janus anderson what the hell for eight percent of the lifetime of this okay all the ones right here these are all the expense ratio you want something small i'd rather go with something less than 50 um half a percent okay i always like to go with something you know less than half a percent or some i can i can also deal with one percent that's okay but one percent is just too much okay because if you put your one percent in the calculator let's say expense ratio is one percent and you decide to invest a thousand dollars and five five hundred dollars every year you know your s your your your, your expense is just gonna be huge okay let's look at that you see that so you're paying more 
in fees than in your it's still no problem because you're making money you're making a lot of money but regardless always look for expense ratio that is less than half a, half a uh, percent with half a percent guess what is going to happen this is going to be re reduced it's going to reduce drastically look at that so from 560 something you're making you're, you're going to be paying fees of 300 so it is very important that mutual fund is the way to go no matter what market we correct but that doesn't mean that you cannot make money in this world to help the future generation that is it about mutual funds and i'm really happy and grateful that you all tuned in i'm always open for your feedbacks okay thank you and have your fantastic weekend happy easter bye bye